All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? Yo, yo, what's up? Uh, my name's CJ. I'm from Pennsylvania, a uh, small town outside the capital. The, the, the name of it is uh, York, PA. Not a lot of people know it, know of it, but uh, we put on, you know what I'm saying? Do you, uh, have you ever heard of uh, the YouTube channel uh, Faces of, what is it? Uh, damn, what's this? Faces of Kensington. Yeah, Kensington. Damn. I, yeah, I hell Kensington. yeah, I have. Yeah. ATG Vlogs? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Hey, that, that, that's a, hey, let me tell you something. Uh, shout out to uh, Faces of Kensington ATG, man. That dude, he's doing his thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, old Frank, Putting on man. for Kensington. That's like one of the worst neighborhoods in Pennsylvania. In the whole East Coast, you know? I I think it might be one of the worst in damn the country, man. Open air drug market. I mean, he was doing live vlogs, right? And fools is shooting up right there (laughs) in front of everyone. Like, it's nothing. It's bad out there, dude. Yeah, bro. You know, for those who have never seen it, you know what I mean? And they they do see it for the first time, it's a culture shock. You know, because especially me me being from right there, and, and now I live in California, San Diego. So when I say I'm from Philly, the first thing I, a lot of people hear is that. Think of yeah. that shit. They just, you know, like I just let them know, you know, it's a lot different. And you know, I grew up out there. You know what I'm saying? And I, I not, you know, I like it here. Umbrella, umbrella drinks and palm trees, baby. So you're enjoying California? You say how long you been out, Cali? Um, shit, I've been out here for uh, almost three years, man. Almost What's three it, years, though. Is it, would you say it's uh, a huge culture shock coming from uh, PA to Cali? Um, yeah, actually it was at first. Like, out here, it's a lot more wide open. Like, uh, for those of you, I don't know, have never been to the East Coast and shit, like, it's really compact. Everything is, like, stacked on top of each other. And um, once you get out here to Cali, it's wide open roads, highways, uh, rolling mountains, well, let me ask you this, man. Uh, what nationality are you? All right, well, um, I'm a couple of different nationalities. I'm actually uh-huh. a mixed kahuna. Um, I identify as white, but uh, my mother's father is actually Mexican. Mm-hmm. He came from Mexico. So I have like a quarter of Mexican in me. Um, and then my mother's mother uh, was Irish. So Mexican and Irish from my mom's side. And then from my dad's side, it was uh, Greek and Italian. So okay. Greek and Italian from my dad's side, and then Mexican Irish from my mom. So I'm a little mix of everything, you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? But uh, I identify as a white boy. You know, I grew up as being the white boy in the neighborhood. You know, we were the only, we were the only family on the block that was white. Yeah. You know, so I grew up having to, like, prove myself a little extra harder than everyone. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is. And, you know... Everybody mixed with a little something nowadays, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no one's pure anymore. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I asked that, you know, uh, were you running with anyone? Or are you affiliated with anything or anything like that? Oh, yeah, most def. Uh, I'm full, you know, I'm Latin king. You okay. know what I'm saying? Uh, to the bone, you know. Uh, since a kid, I was always, like, running with them and affiliated. Um, and then later on in life, I actually took the full step and got crowned and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, but I'm 30 years old now. I've been ripping and running since I was a kid. And, you know, uh, a true king is a man first, king second. Okay. And, uh, you know, I had, I have one kid on the way. I have one already and one by marriage. So I got three kids. So I'm at home taking care of the family. And, uh, those who know, know, then I know that I know I'm official to the gristle. So. Y'all Official to the grist. Okay, so uh, what led you to the pen, dog? What, what, how, tell me how it started. You said you told me a little bit about the beginning, the juvenile thing, and that's mm-hmm. been wild. You turned a, uh, uh, what, nine-month bid into a juvenile life sentence, correct? Yeah, basically. So what happened was, man, uh, I've been getting in trouble since grade school. Yeah. Um, You've been to adult been... prison, too, as well, though, right? Yes, I've been to adult prison okay. as well. Um, so uh, you want to hear what led me to being in that? Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear from again. The juvenile thing is what I'm really interested in, actually. How you okay, yeah. Time. Yeah, actually, been to both sides, so I know about both sides of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I've been getting in trouble since a kid. You know what I mean? I've always been uh, known as a troublemaker. You know what I mean? I'm not proud of it. I'm not trying to glorify it in no shape, way, shape, or form, but, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It happened, and uh, I'm not ashamed. I've learned from it, and I'm trying to extract the positive from it. So, yeah, I've been getting in trouble since a kid. Um, 
you know. So at 14 years old, uh, I decided to steal a car. And um, me and two co-defendants, one of them was my cousin. One was a guy that I never met before. We went and we stole this car that had the keys in it. And it turned out to be um, the chief of police is vehicle <laughs> of that town we were in. Oh, what kind of car, <laughs> yeah. man? Can you tell me what kind of car? Geo Tracker. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not the Geo. Yeah, the Geo. <laughs> I thought Yo. you were about to say Geo Metro. Remember them, James? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> them things, the tires are like this big on them shit. Yeah. I wrecked one of them one time. But anyways, that's another story another day. Go oh, ahead. Oh, man. Bro. All right. I, uh, so Geo Tracker. Um, yeah, we stole that and uh, we were joyriding and I got caught. Um, so when it came time for us to all go to court, um, of course, all of our parents showed up. Um, the guy that I didn't know, his parents uh, wanted him to come home to their custody. My cousin as well. My aunt and uncle wanted him to come home to their custody. My parents said, nah, we don't want him. Keep him. Duh. He's too much. <laughs> I was gonna come. <laughs> I know it's like, not fun. It's funny, but it's not funny. Yeah, it's you know what not I mean? what like, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like in the moment, you know, I was like, I had a lot of feelings. I wanted to. I was playing the hard role, but in all reality, I was like, damn, like everyone gets to go home but me. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, so yeah, they all went home, and then uh, I ended up staying in that time. Um, probably for like three months I was in and I got out, I was out for two weeks, only out for two weeks. And I went right back. What I did was, uh, I ended up stealing a gun. I stole a pistol. I sold it to someone. The person I sold it to got caught with it. And they told the police that I sold, that I stole it. Um, you know, I sold it to him. Uh, the gun was actually my stepdad and shit. So he wanted to press charges automatically because he didn't like me. You know what I mean? And so that's why I went back two weeks later for selling a stolen gun. Um, they sentenced me to nine to 15 months or whatever it is when you're a juvenile. You know what I mean? And I ended up going to uh, a boot camp. Yeah. Um, I did 122 days in a boot camp. Um, that was, a, that was a, a trip. There's actually a few of them that when they had deaths, from their so-called restraints, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they're, uh -huh. they're restraining these kids in these camps and what they do is they call it working your problems out on the ground. And you know, it'll be four or five grown men on top of you holding you on the floor until you calm down or work through your thinking errors. And they held this kid on the floor so long and put so much weight on his back that he literally suffocated and died. You can look Dang. it all up. It's uh -oh. all fact. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I understand, you know, we're, we're, we're locked up and we're bad. And, but, you know, it doesn't even matter. At the end of the day, we're still 14, 15, 16 year old kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the reform should be being done then. Exactly. You shouldn't be treating the kids like that. Okay. I understand, uh, you know, you got to, uh, put hands on someone to, you know, calm them down or whatever, but to hold someone on the floor for three hours against their will, it's a little excessive. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I led it into a boot camp two weeks after I got out of three months, uh, went to boot camp and um, I got out after four months, 122 days. I was out for not even a month and I went back again. And I was still like 15 at this time. And when I went back for it this time is I stole a car, another car, <laughs> stole another car. And I got caught because I actually took the car to my town's high school parking lot. And I was doing donuts at three o'clock in the morning in the parking lot. <laughs> and that's how I got caught. 15, the cop, boy. 15. At 15, yeah, stupid Love kid, it. you know? That's when I started taking cars, about 13 yeah. years old. Yep. Yeah, man, this shit was crazy. So, uh, um, yes, I got caught. I was doing the donuts. The cop was actually on the fucking highway at the bottom of the hill because the high school was on top of a hill. So the cop was on the highway, and he's seen the headlights going around in circles and wondering, oh, what the hell shit. is that going on up there? Yeah. So, yeah, he pulls up the hill, and I 
see him coming up the hill real slow with his headlights out. And I take off. And I fucking tore, tore off down the hill. And I got on like a little high speed chase. I'd say not even lasted five minutes. I got down. My first corner I tried to hit. I crashed the truck. Uh, my friend was actually that was with me was in the back of the truck when this happened, when I took <laughs> off. So like I, I got like halfway down the road and crashed. He fucking fell and like smashed against the uh, back windows that are in the back of a cab on the truck. Yeah, yeah. Bam! Hit the things and cracked the windows all up. Um, the cop came, got me out of the car, and I went back for that. And they sent me to another place uh, for a year. I got sentenced at 15 to a year. All right. Um, but seven months into that bid, I was in a residential placement program. And basically what that is, it's like a college campus for kids and it's, a, uh, you know, but it's court ordered and, um, residential, the doors like aren't a locked. program. Yeah. Program residential okay. doors aren't locked. You know what I mean? It was called yeah. a Braxis. Okay. It was, uh, it was in the middle of the Allegheny national forest. I'm not sure if you're familiar with like the yeah, Pittsburgh it area. It's pretty out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually it was. It was a really yeah. beautiful place, oh, but cool. All right. it was nothing out there. It was yeah. nothing out there. So it was one of those spots that didn't have a fence. And their thing was, go ahead, run if you want to. You ain't going to make it. The, either the mountain lions are going to get you or the crazy hillbillies are going to blow your head off. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it was one of them places. So I ended up going there. I got sentenced to a year. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Seven yeah, months yeah, yeah. into that bid, seven months into that bid, uh, I got tired of it. And uh, me and one of my homies, uh, I'm not going to say his name because we kind of still communicate today. Uh, but if he's seeing this, he'll know. Uh, we teamed up and um, we decided that we were going to uh, beat the shit out of a staff member because he was always um, on our nerves and shit and he was always uh actually doing extra mile when it came to punishing us yeah um basically we'll put the icing on the cake is uh one night uh, me and my buddy we were on um this like punishment thing i forget what the hell they called it but you had to sit in the hallway of the dorm all day long in your flip-flops and write essays you know what i mean some type yeah. of punishment and uh, we went to gym that night. And when you're on punishment, you're not allowed to play basketball with everyone else and shit. So um, we were off to the side and we got caught dribbling the ball. So the guy that we, the staff member that we hit, we actually hit him because when we walked back to the dorm, which is about the space of uh, a football field and a half, it was the middle of winter at the time. And um, I'd say it was probably you know how it gets in the mountains of PA yeah. less than 20 degrees outside. Yeah. He took our jackets away. He took our jackets and made us walk back in our t-shirts. Why he do because, that for? Because we got caught dribbling the ball when we were on punishment. We weren't supposed Damn. to uh, be, we weren't supposed to be playing like basketball or messing with, we were supposed to be writing our essays on the side. And we got caught like trying to cross each other over and basically horse playing. And yeah. his punishment was to take our jackets and make us walk back in the cold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so we got really pissed about that. And uh, we ended up luring this dude and luring the staff member into one of the back rooms later on that night at pill call. And uh, we just started beating him up. How the hell you do that? How'd you lure right, him? So what was the bait? <laughs> I got to hear this shit. Dog. All right. Oh check God. it out. So, um, uh, a few weeks before that, someone told me that if I um, were to act crazy, they might shit me out and give me a medical discharge, right? So I started pretending that I was having these crazy ass dreams. Like every night I would start screaming out different names, start like flopping around in my sleep. And when they'd come wake me up, I would swing on them. You know what I mean? But I yeah. would use it as, I would tell them I was having these nightmares and I couldn't control it. Um, that was going on, and, it, and so long story short, I did that for a while, and it didn't work. They didn't medically discharge me <laughs> for that. Oh, my right? God, you're flopping around <laughs> in the bomb that night for nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it didn't work, but so some time had passed after that, and um, at pill call, after the night he took our jacket, I, uh, me and my buddy went over to the side where they give you, like, uh, 
Neosporin for your lips or like a throat lozenger or some warm water and salt to gargle. This, they call a pill call every night and they let yeah. you go get some, some self over the counter shit. Yeah. And, um, me and him went over there <laughs> and, uh, when I was over there, uh, after I got my, got whatever I got, when I was coming back, I, I seen the staff and I was talking to him and I said his name, you know, I was like, Hey, such and such, you know, I've been having these nightmares again. And, um, you know, they've been really bothering me, blah, 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 blah. You know, I just want to, I just really need someone to talk to this and this and that. Can you just please talk to me real quick before we go to bed? I just want to like some advice on something. And, uh, I lured him into the back recreational room where they go to take us on the weekends to watch movies. Oh, so you're trying to get them to talk on a more personal note, one-on-one yeah, type shit. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So you're. <laughs> I want to talk to you, man, but I don't want to do it right here, man. Is there any way we can get some privacy type of shit? Okay, okay, okay. Yes, exactly. And then, and then I, that's how I lured him back there. And then while we were back there, um, I didn't, I didn't close the door all the way. The door was like cracked oh, a little bit. Shit. And, and yeah. then my buddy just came back and we ambushed him. He came back, came in, clocked him. I clocked him. He went on the ground, started screaming, tried to grab his radio. I took the radio. Smacked him across the side of the head with the radio. Holy shit. Yeah, well, and I bet experience. you won't never take jackets from people again. <laughs> Yo, we did it, but for, you know, it was bad, but it was because he did something bad. So it was like eye for eye, which, you know, isn't right or whatever. But, you know, I'm not saying that we did that to him for no reason. You know, there yeah. was reason behind beating the shit out of this dude, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's good yeah. that you're uh, acknowledging that, you know, actually. Yeah. That a lot of people don't even acknowledge it. it just they just <laughs> look at it and people think that it's just entertainment and they laugh it up. But really, you can look back at our pain and laugh at all we want. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. And I made a video in the past. Uh, why do correctional officers get attacked? And boom, yeah, that was one of the reasons why they're doing boom. too damn much, dog. Much too much unnecessary shit. Write ups for a wrinkle on the bed, bro. You're guaranteed to get rocked sooner or later. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just stole that dude's canteen for the week or mm-hmm. the month because of a half-made bed that he just got out of. Bro, that's too much. He's mm-hmm. liable to snap on you. And I tell people that all the time. Man, don't do too much. So what happened after that? They transfer you from the program, I'm guessing. Yeah, most definitely. Got FTA, failure to adjust to the program. And uh, after that, they sent me to um, a more secure facility. Um. Uh, it was uh, called NCSTU, um, North Central Secure Treatment Unit. But before I went there, I uh, basically went back to like what is like um, county jail for juveniles, Barnes Hall. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, because of how violent the situation was and because I showed zero remorse for it, it took them almost a year and a half to find a, another placement for me. Damn. Okay, so I was actually in the juvenile detention center for a year and a half, but not on hell, the detention. Huh? Yeah, very bored as hell. I, and they had me on the detention side. They transferred me to the shelter side. Uh, I've been to both sides five, six times, got in trouble over here, got kicked back over there. You know, I was basically, you know, my parents didn't want me. You know, they didn't really have nowhere to send me, you know, so they kept me in the, uh, the placement, in the Barnes Hall or whatever. And uh, so I spent like a year and a half there. So by the time I got to the secure place, once they finally found a spot for me, I was like almost 17. And uh, I spent till mm, right before I turned 21, right before I turned 21. That's why I say it was a juvenile life uh, bid. Oh, just all it, installment playing out with a month here and there. Yeah. But- I got out for two weeks once, a month one time, and a month another time. So from 14 to 21, I have, what, two and a half months on the street Yeah, that's, as a kid? That's nuts. It's nuts. You know, I grew up by the system. I was raised by the system, you know. And, you know, honestly, in some ways, that hindered me today in life, you know, like as far as, like, opening bank accounts. I didn't know how to do none of that shit, you know. Yeah. Thanks, thank God I got my beautiful fiance now. She helps me. And, you know, ain't nothing like that. Second half to help you out, man. I tell people all the time, find that good girl, boy, you know? Yeah, boy. Uh, yeah. But, um, so, yeah, um, so I went in there. I went into the secure place. And that's yeah. where, this is where, what I messaged you about, the span where the craziness happened. 
When oh, I was okay, in that, so I, we yeah. haven't even gotten to the craziness yet. Okay. No, that, that, the, the, the little bit of craziness was just like stuff that I was doing. The real craziness that I actually messaged you about is in this next story right here when I did my time at the secure placement. Just like the shit that I'm about to tell you about is actual fact. You can look it up. It's public record. Um, all right, so I just did a year and a half in the Barnes Hall, and um, they sent me to the secure place, and uh, I was there for about mm, a good year or so, I'd say. I was there for about a good year or so, and um, we had started to get a lot of people from uh, the same neighborhood in there, okay? okay. And... Um, so it would start, we were like starting, the guys were like click starting up. to click up, yeah. click up on one wing. And on the other wing, there was a lot of guys from a different area, from a whole nother city on the other side of the state. From, so this side, it was the guys from Philly. And on this side, it was the guys from Pittsburgh. Okay. And um, so uh, there was, they started beefing a little bit. So there was like a little bit of a war. You know what I mean? Um, no between, gangs uh, involved? Was there gangs? Yeah, it was actually Bloods and Crips. Oh, okay, but crit. but the areas kind of went together too. Yeah, the areas went together. So on the Pittsburgh side, there was like a uh, there was a lot of Crip guys. There was a couple of Crip dudes from Pittsburgh, and then um, from the Philly side, even the guys that weren't from Philly, like like me, I wasn't from Philly. I was from York, but that yeah. was close to Philly, so I was yeah. rocking with the Philly guys. And there were some other guys that were some Bloods that were rocking with Philly. So it wasn't necessarily only a gang war. Um, but there were some gang members there. Yeah, so like there was a lot of tension in the building, okay? And um, there were fights going back and forth. Like every day when we went to school, uh, A-Wing would get someone from B-Wing. The next day, B-Wing would get someone from A-Wing. There was a lot of tension in the building. And uh, we had recently had a really big visit. And um, Philly was actually like about five hours away from the placement we were at. And um, so they uh, actually set up a bus, like a, a um, sprinter, and picked up everyone's family and brought them all together on one visit. Well, that's so nice. the visit room was crowded as a motherfucker. So on that visit, uh, it brought in a lot of um, different types of pills and shit, yeah. like Xanax and Percocet. And so that night, um, as there was a lot of tension in the uh, b building because of the pills beef that was going on between oh, A and B. Okay. okay. Um, the pills intensified it. The pills uh, intensified the tension, you know what I mean, of yeah. everything coming in. And also, too, there was, like, a lot of tension with the staff members because uh, the staff members were, again, in this place, they were, like, uh, really bad. Um, and after what happened, happened, like a lot of them got fired. They were beating us up, splitting our eyes wide open. Um, like I said, restraining, working your problems out on the ground. Um, so the, there was a lot of tension from all that. And everyone was high that night. And uh, at snack time, there's uh, snacks always given out in the juvenile system because they have to follow like a DPW and shit. Yeah, what kind and, of snacks um, did y'all get? Uh, we, that night we had the Uncrustables, the peanut butter oh, jelly. The BB yeah. With the strawberry jam, though. <laughs> With the strawberry. So they were Judy special. Jails, I swear they're all the same, man. I swear <laughs> to God, dude. We used to get the milk in the PPJ, crustable jank. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. okay. Uh, snack time. All sure. right, snack. They bring in the snacks. <laughs> yeah, they bring in the snacks. And uh, so someone um, ended up, a staff member seen, seen someone trading snacks. Okay. And uh, from that one peanut butter and jelly sandwich that he told him he couldn't trade on, instead of just letting him, they don't even pay for the fucking sandwiches. And if they do, they might be five cents a piece. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that, because they're buying so many. You know, so the, instead of just letting the man have an extra peanut butter and jelly, uh, the staff member decided to keep pushing it and trying to take it from him. So from that one Uncrustable, it sparked a whole riot that ended up lasting over an hour and they brought uh the state police from 13 different agencies in to come and have to lock the place down yeah so and you that one the articles on this shit man this yeah, really happened ladies and gentlemen. It. 
riding <laughs> over a damn crustable. <laughs> Shit's Peanut crazy. butter and jelly sandwich. So like the staff member didn't want to let him have it. And so what happened is a fight started between the uh, resident and the staff member right there over the sandwich. And then down the hall, the guy, his homie seen that from the same neighborhood. And a fight started between this resident and this staff member. And then down the hall, another one started. So there was three different fights going on in the hallway, right? So they, they, they ordered to lock the building down. And uh, when they locked the building down, everyone seen this going on at the other dorm because you could see through the glass windows. Like they were hey, metal doors, it. but they had glass windows. That's the dorm that you're beefing with, right? Beefing with, yeah. So okay. what ends up happening, the riot really goes crazy when the guys from the other dorm bust their way through the center divider doors and come over. So now it's like 10 guys on this side, 10 guys on this side fighting each other, fighting staff members, like staff members from other buildings on the campus all came because they called for like all staff and back up, back up. As they were coming in the door, they were getting their jaws broken and locking the socks as they were walking through the door. Dang. So they had no time to react. Um, I literally seen with my eyes one guy break a broomstick over in half and hold it to his neck, asking for the keys. Um, they had the fire extinguishers. The whole building was sprayed out. You had to walk around with a shirt on your face. Um, the staff members, three of them actually got to lock themselves inside a little bubble. You know, the punk-ass bubble that they stand and talk shit to you from. Yeah, he locked himself in there. So what they did is took the back of the fire extinguisher and bop, 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 put a hole in it about that big, enough for the nozzle to go through. <sighs> smoked them all, oh, and all out. Smoked them out. <laughs> smoked them all them out. out. <laughs> smoked his ass out. That's crazy, Yo, man. That's crazy out. shit, dude. Dude, it was nuts. It was completely nuts. There was helicopters over the place. Um... So there were some guys that were already locked down because, like I said, it was at snack time, snack and then lockdown. Yeah. You know, so some doors were closed, some were open. If all those doors would have been open, if it would have happened, it like been crazier, huh? Yeah, twenty minutes earlier, there would have been dead people in there and everything because there there were staff that actually got trapped in the bathroom and got stomped in the face beyond recognition behind the shit and like like they're really bad, really bad. So. Um, the riot lasted for about an hour. Um, I was in, my room was in the very end of the hallway. So in my room, I could see all the way down mm. and I'm just like watching all this shit unfold. I didn't really take part in fighting no one. I was like more standing my ground. Like anyone, me and my homie, anyone come back here, dog. We were from the same town. Anyone come back here, we, we rocking them, but we're not going to go over there and catch charges for some shit. These dudes, we ain't from their town. Like, I don't even fuck what they doing. We're going to stand back here stand our ground you know what i mean i had my little razor and shit and so we and didn't you weren't really take banging part. or nothing yet right? no i wasn't banging yeah. at all yet i yeah. was still the neutron yeah at the time um so uh you know um i was back there watching all this shit unfold and shit and actually at one point during the riot i fucking just went into the uh rec room and me and my homie that was from my neighborhood we were just playing madden for like 15 oh, minutes. Oh, <laughs> Y'all took advantage of that ride. Yeah, hell oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead never got go play to play some of these video games right quick. <laughs> you can see them yeah. for a while, fellas. You might yep. as well get it in now. Uh, so I was in the back, saw the cops. So the cops finally come in. State police, they end up tasing a bunch of people. So as like I said, we're in the back watching it unfold because we knew the cops were about to come. So as soon as there was like a door... To off to my left and as soon as the, I, we seen that fucker bust open me and my homie bo both shoom, slammed our doors right closed like we had never had them open yeah. you know what i mean and our rooms were clean and shit no one had came in our rooms um so we got away scot-free you yeah, know right, us too it. but you know but then again we weren't uh really partaking too much yeah. You know, but y'all were having we, a little we, fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we 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 snuck our little, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I know what oh, you mean shit. exactly, man. Uh, that is crazy. What was that place called? One more time, man, if you don't mind me asking. Um, North Central Secure Treatment Unit. It's in Danville, Pennsylvania. Okay, Danville. We got um, Danville in Virginia too. Um, yeah, and then the, the events that followed behind that are even more tragedies that follow after the riot. You know what I'm saying? I actually have some more from that same placement from some shit that I did. It was yeah. it was be it was after a uh, 
when the riot after the riot happened, they locked us down. Um, they came in like uh, the big wigs, as you would call it, like superintendents of yeah. the Department of Public Welfare came in and fired after like riot. after the riot and everyone yeah. got locked down. Um, they put us on a freeze. All right. Uh, 16, 17 year old kids, not even brains, not even fully developed yet. They had us on a freeze for like 65 days. And what they did on this freeze was just left us in our room, fed us three times a day, and they didn't even give us our one-hour rec. They gave us 15 minutes of rec, three times a week, only for a shower. For 60-some days, they did this to us because they fired everyone. They had no one to watch us and shit. They're, so they fired everyone because a lot. They, had, they did a big investigation and realized that, um, you know, there was a lot of corruption going on. And um, drugs were being brought in through staff and uh, there was actually sexual relations going on between residents and staff and big, huge investigation followed and shit. All this shit is fact. And uh, they had us on this freeze. And uh, during the freeze, right before they fired everyone, they were playing a game called knock the resident off the mushroom. All right. So everyone's just in their room, sitting down on their little stall on their stool, I'm sorry, stool inside the room, and it's in the shape of a mushroom. It's just a yeah, bar yeah. with a round top. Yeah. That's how they got it, knocked them. So what they do is they pop the door, three or four of them run in there and bum rush and tack, spear him off of his stool and beat the shit out of him real quick and then close his door. Take off clothes and then close his door. Yeah, staff members were doing this to the residents after the riot. They were residents, like, oh, you want to be- Residents, ladies and gentlemen, if you're lost, are the <clears throat> juvenile inmates. Right. Yeah, residents are the juvenile inmates. Staff members are the COs. Residents yeah. are inmates. Staff are COs in the so juvenile just, side. So they just blindsided sided people and just tacking them off the mushroom, huh? Yeah, and we're just beating the shit out of them, completely stripping them naked, stripping their room, and then leaving and closing them in there for the next hour, two hours, whatever. That's what they were doing to us after the riot. Their thing was, you want to beat up our brethren? You think you're cool, blah, blah, blah. You want to team up? Now Now fight us. Now fight us. We, now we got the upper hand, blah, blah, blah. That's what they're talking shit as they're walking up and down the hallway. You know what I mean? And then just picking doors at random. Oh, pop such and such. Take all his clothes, leave him naked in there, bust it up, yeah. and go to the next one. You know what I mean? So, like... Yeah. But I mean, I know that the riot, that the riot happened and shit. But like, they were doing stuff like that before the riot, which yeah. incited the riot and like, you know, help put the icing on the cake. You know, like, why not let the man have the extra peanut butter and jelly? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like all that extra shit followed. So they came in and fired like fifty people. Had us on that freeze where we only came out for fifteen minutes a day. You know what I mean? Um, and. I like I was young at that time, you know, and that shit like I feel like, you know, damaged me today, spending all that time by myself. And like even now today, like I find myself wanting to be alone. You yeah, know what I mean? Me like too, not man. even, you know, just there's sometimes like not even my girl can comfort the feeling that I'm trying to find. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And uh, to me, man. Yeah, man. So it sucks, you know, and it sucks. And it happens to a lot of juveniles. They get caught up in the web. It just is like a revolving door, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to get into the adult side yet. I really wanted to focus in on this juvenile stuff. There's uh, so much. But, I mean, it's not really juvenile. I mean, you go there till you're, what, 21? So you're in there with yeah, adults. Yeah, you're 21. Yeah, you're in there, yeah. With, well, you're in there with dudes, 17 yeah. years old, bench pressing 255 pounds. Yeah, there, yeah. There's dudes in there that will F you up and, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Um, yeah, I just want people to know that because they think sometimes juveniles might be a little softer. But, ladies and gentlemen, it's nah. buck wild in juvenile joints. It's all there is to mm -hmm. it. I don't give a shit. They might not be decapitating, but damn, shit, mm -hmm. it's treacherous, man. You better. It's you not as get much your... on like the stabbing side and shit, but that knuckle game better be up there. You yeah, know what I'm saying? for sure, man. Definitely. For sure. Uh all right. Well, look, what do you got going on now? How long you been out, man? Um, shit, I've been out. I got out um, after I went to the adult. I maxed out my last docket. I've been out since 2017. So about okay. uh, no, I'm sorry, 2016. Okay, 2016 better. so four years four years i've been out this will be my fifth year in november or something like that or my Excellent, fourth something man. coming up on my fifth i think 
Yeah, but, I'm like that too, bro. I don't keep track of all the exact. Yeah, no, I, I'll know the numbers if I do it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so you rap, and yes, and you I tap, tap. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, rap and tap. Tell me tat. about it, man. Tell me what you got going on. Any kind of uh, shout outs you got? Let's hear it, man. What you got? Yeah, most deaf, man. Um, uh, I got a shout out. I actually got my own little channel that I got going on right uh -huh. now. It's called uh, Grew Up Inside. So I, yeah. I, you know, I just started it. Um, I'm basically just, you know, going on there telling the story of my life and different funny stories from the uh, juvenile side. I mo mainly want to focus on the juvenile side and like the corruption that's going on in there. Cause like I said, in, in that side is where the reform should be done. Our, our, our youth is the future of our nation. Yeah. So that's where the, the time should be taken to have the programs and have the counseling and stuff like that, but it's not. So that's what my channel focuses on. It's called uh, Grew Up Inside. Um, and then yeah, my music, um, I got uh, a few more things that I need to get together to have my own personal studio in my house. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, I have that going on. Once I get that up, a bunch of new music's going to be on the way. But in the meantime, you can, like, hear me freestyle and follow my day-to-day -day activities on my Instagram. It's um, I rap, I tap, and that's spelled like your eyeball. So E-Y-E-R-A-P-E-Y-E-T-A-T. -E -E I rap, I tap. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, Got you, man. I'm gonna leave uh, all the stuff uh, pinned in the comment section description of the video for y'all to click and check out okay. if you want to follow him. And look, man, I mean, you you definitely seem like a good dude, man. Like you, you, you know, you change your stuff around. You got a good head on your shoulders. You're not really, uh, you know, you just look like you're out here doing what you need to get done, man. Uh, yeah, like I said, king, uh, man first. King second, you know what I mean? I'm taking care of my family and doing what I got to do, trying to create my own lane.